I wasn't sure what I should say tonight, but after listening to that introduction, I think I should tell you about Detroit. At the other end of the state. Detroit, I came to Detroit nearly 60 years ago in 1953. And I've lived most of that time in the same house where I still live which the city council recently designated a historic site because so many struggles affecting Detroit have taken place in that house. <laughs> I think it's important that on the western side of the state you should know what's happening on the east side. <laughs> because it is primarily a city of African Americans and Latinos and a growing number of Asian Americans. It is a city which is changing the image of revolution, which for, for, for most people is still the 1917 Russian Revolution, very verticalist seizure of power and control. I've spent most of my life trying to change that concept and create another model of a revolution. A revolution taking place from the ground up. A revolution taking place from the grassroots. From people understanding that we are at a very important time in the history of humanity. We are engaged in a transition as profound as that from hunting and gathering to agriculture 11,000 years ago, from agriculture to industry about 300 years ago, and now to a completely new kind of society which requires our reimagining everything. Work, how we grow our food, transportation, how we educate our children. It is a fantastic privilege and opportunity for all of us to be participate in this great transition. I, in Detroit, what is happening is that people who are seeking for a new American dream, because they know that the old American dream is dead, are coming more and more. I want to give you just an idea of what's been happening in this last period in Detroit. Departments of urban planning and architecture are bringing their students to Detroit because they believe that they should be designing and planning for the next century and not for the old. Last week, we had 50 people who are involved in urban farming come to the Bob Center. They have been brought together by people at the University of uh, Wyoming, Cornell University, who are concerned with food, food justice and food dignity. Last night, we had disability activists from Georgia who came to the Bob Center. Next week, Faculty from McAllister College in St. Paul, Minnesota are coming to the Bard Center because they want to find out what's going on both in ideas and on the ground. That's a very important thing to happen in this country and in this state. And I think we should be aware of it as we, as we emphasize enormous commitment, enormous imagination, and enormous energy in creating local this is a historical transformation which is taking place in the world. We are living at a very extraordinary time. It's not only the Arab Spring, it's what's happening here in Grand Rapids, and what's happening in Detroit. I want to help you think about that because when I came to Detroit in 1953, there's a lot of energy, a lot of hope. People had come there to work at the plant during the Second World War. 
that the Detroit had been considered the arsenal of democracy. But even then, what was taking place was the freeways were being built, enabling white people to leave the city and money and investment to leave the city. Very shortly, the Chrysler Jefferson plant at which my husband worked with 17,000 employees began to employ only 2,000 workers. And in the 1960s, we experienced an enormous uprising of young people who felt that they were no longer needed in the plant, that jobs were no longer possible. They, there were 40 people killed. They had to send in federal troops in order to quell the uprising. And people said it was a revolution. And we said, no, that's not a revolution. That's a rebellion, that's an uprising, that's a protest. We have to begin creating alternatives. We have to reimagine where humanity is going in its continuing evolution. And we began to do that, and when we, what happened was because white power would no longer maintain law and order, we got the black man, Coleman Young, very brilliant man. But Coleman Young had not changed his thinking, he had not changed his imagination, he had not been done to reimagine. And Coleman Young thought that he could bring back jobs, that all he had to do was to create another big GM plant the whole time of them. We said, no, there has to be something very different. So we convened young people in a program called Detroit Summer. It was in order to redefine and rebuild and respirit the city of Detroit. And a lot of African-American elders who had seen the abandonment and the vacant lots in the city, not as white, not just as filled with old tires or old mattresses and dead cats, but places where you could begin to grow food for the community, begin to change the thinking of young people so they thought in terms of patience, change taking patience, instead of as quick fixes they came and joined with the young people. And the young people and they together triggered the most fantastic urban agricultural movement that's been seen. They put the kids together and reconnect with the earth and reconnect with their elders. And before long, they could see we start planting community gardens and the community gardens expanded from a few dozen to a thousand. And the community gardens began ways to reorganize and rebuild the community. Over there is Merrill Thompson who runs a uh, garden called Feed of the The basic concept of which is that you cannot free yourself until you feed yourself. See, that garden is not just greens and cabbage and zucchini. It embodies an idea, an historical idea, that you have to be self-reliant, that you have to do work that feeds yourself and frees you. And that's what's happening not only in gardening now, where we're bringing back neighborhoods to the hood, we're replacing war zones with peace zones, we are doing, we are taking advantage of the new technology to create new work and new culture. That has been described as involves eliminating the market and beginning to produce for your needs on a local basis. It involves a whole new philosophy of work and culture. And I want you to think about that because Detroit is not just a place where you produce. Detroit is a place where we have ideas, where we have philosophy, where what is needed at this time, particularly in the world, is both activism and philosophy. 
vision. Big ideas, not little ones. And that's what I want to bring you from the city of Detroit. And I hope very much that that will help your commitment to your organization and that we can connect.